It's the 6A state title game between the Rogers Mounties and the Springdale Harbor Wildcats. I'm RJ Hawk along with Bobby Swafford as we get you set for today's 6A title game. Got a good one, Bobby, as the Mounties come in 22 and 7 on the season, Springdale 25 and 8. And you know, oftentimes you wonder why are Northwest Arkansas teams going to come down to Benton to play a title that's game. Right. Just that's how it works out. And I, I think the folks that are, that are coming out for this one, they're in for a dandy. Yeah, these two teams know a lot about each other. They played each other on back-to-back -back days during the regular season. They split their conference championship. But you're going to see Rodgers is the number one seed because of a tiebreaker with overall record. And because then they're going to be the home team. Two to one, Harbor won on April the 26th. Back that up the very next day. Rogers bounced back to the five nothing victory on April the 27th. Both of these teams have a lot of good arms. They both got a lot of pop. They both have players going to play at the next level. This is what you expect when you have the largest classification in the state in a state championship game. Rogers and Harbor is going to be a good one. And when you look just combined between these two teams, seven college baseball players, whether it be Division One or yeah. Division Two, JUCO. You've got a lot of a lot of collegiate athletes mm -hmm. on this field today. Yeah, it's a lot of high-end talent. A couple going to Arkansas, a couple going to Arkansas State, as you mentioned, on both sides. So this is going to be a really clean baseball game. And really what comes down to in state championship games, who makes the critical error at the critical time? Who gets that timely base hit? Who can take advantage of a free path or a free walk or a wild pitch, whatever the case may be? That's what's going to be the difference in these seven innings. Well, let's go ahead and take a look at the Springdale uh, Harbor lineup as they make their way to the plate right now. And for Spring Springdale Harbor, they're going to lead off with Walker Emmel. They'll have jo uh, Clark Jenkins uh, batting second, Ethan Fender, Brock Kimball, Cooper Dossett, Drew McClendon, Ross Felder, Cade Ratcliffe, and Caden Ross. That's the lineup for Springdale Harbor. The battery for Rogers today, they've got Jackson Wells on the mound. He'll be uh, throwing to Eli Marcotte, who is behind the plate today. Both these outstanding players um, for the Rogers Mounties. As I said, Rogers comes in 22 and 7 on the year. Springdale 25 and 8. And we are just about set and ready to go here at Everett Field in Benton, Arkansas for the Class 6A state title game. Head coach for the Mounties, Matt Melson for Springdale Harbor, Dustin Hellcamp. And we're just about set and ready to go. Jackson Wells with the first pitch is a called strike on the inside corner. And that'll start things off for Walker Emmel, 0-1. No matter where you play, no matter what classification you're playing in, get a ground ball to short. Nerves are going to be a factor, and an infield single there for Harbor as Emmel sets the table. Yeah, it was a slow roller to the shortstop, and he let it play deep. Long throw, but the speed of Emmel, he's the right fielder today for Springdale Harbor, and that is the first base hit of the ball game for Springdale Harbor. And yeah, no good shield let that one come to him instead of charging the baseball. Kind of a tough angle, had to range deep to his right. Couldn't get enough on the throw to gun down the speedy Emmel. Jenkins at the plate now for Springdale Harbor as he'll take a ball low and outside. Jenkins, Clark Jenkins that is, going to Arkansas State, playing left field today for Springdale Harbor, batting 221 with 12 RBI. He has had a triple on a home run this year. Wells with the 1-0 pitch way inside and takes the count 2-0. That 88-mile-an-hour fastball had a little too much run on the inside, and now Jenkins in a favorable count. There's a pick move back over to first base, and he gets back safely. Jackson Wells, when I when you talk to Rodgers, and, and really they've got a plethora of arms that can come out and throw, but... Talking with Matt Melson, he said, you know, this is our go-to guy throughout the years. There's a chopper to third, tried to roll it up at second base, and they get the out at second. That's the first out of the inning. It'll be a fielder's choice for Clark Jenkins. A nice job by Long to get the lead runner to throw a little off the mark, but Finley Bunch able to make the reach. And the umpire in the field, Trey Pryor, says he's got the toe on the bag. But of course, we've got a little umbrance there from the Harbor staff. Well, you know, one thing that we talked about earlier in that first game that we did today, the field here at Everett Field is an all-turf field. So when you go to slide, you, you have a little momentum in that slide, and you slide past the bag, and that throw was a little off. If you watch the replay here, a little off target, but I think Coach Hellcamp's got a bit of an argument.
Here's Wells with the pitch. This is outside. It's one and zero. Oh. Overcast skies today here in Benton. Had a little rain roll through earlier today. Hopefully we'll stay out of that here in the nightcap. 1-0, swung on and fouled off into the Rogers dugout. You can tell Wells is going to want to stay down, work low in that strike zone. That's say that bottom third, you elevate the ball too much against this powerful Harbor lineup. You're going to be wishing you didn't. They'll make you pay, and they'll put some balls out in the parking lot. Here's the 1-1. One, one. Nice curveball. Broke it off on top, and it's now 1-2. Nice bender there. Nice change of pace. Easily a 15-mile-an-hour differential between his fastball and his breaking ball. So unless you're looking for that as a harbor hitter, it's going to be tough to slow down the bat enough to get a good swing off. 1-2's the count as there's a throw back over to first, and what a close play at first base. Empire says he gets back safely. Empire right on top of that call. It's a nice move, though, by Wells. Nice pick attempt. And they're moving. He's getting it, he's getting ever so close every time he throws over. By the way, Jackson Wells has committed to go play college baseball at the University of Arkansas, Rich Mountain. The junior college program down in Mena. Division two in the junior college ranks. One, two, here it is. Another curveball that's slapped foul over into the Rogers side of the field. He's got a great curveball. Does. A lot of north-south action. Called it the 12-6 variety. Jackson Wells, he's he's not one to work quickly through his counts. He, he's really paying attention to the runner at first. Here's the one, two. Up high, throw down to first. And they call him safe. That one was close. Umpire right there on top of it. And that was a bang bang play. Nice job there by Marcotte to throw behind the runner. He's going to be a good look at it. Unless he missed him on that far side, which we couldn't see. The the throw was there in time, but you don't you can't tell if it if the, the glove actually touched him or not. It's a great job on Marcotte though. Throw behind the runner. 2-2, two, two, it's inside. Probably should have been rewarded with a, a pickoff attempt there, a pickoff. It's, as you mentioned, you couldn't tell if the, the tag was applied at first. So the count's three and two. There's only one out here in the top of the first inning. Another attempt over to first base. A lot of attention being played to Clark Jenkins. Jenkins headed to Arkansas State to play baseball next year. Yeah, just definitely a much more methodical approach from Wells than we saw in that 5A title game earlier between Van Buren and Jonesboro. Here's the 3 2. Now the curveball that's fouled off. Pointers claim their first ever state championship. Rogers hoping to do the same thing tonight. So far here in the top of the first inning, Jackson Wells has already thrown 12 pitches. He's only got one out here in the top of the first. Three twos on the way, runner goes, swung and missed. They throw down to second, and they got him at second base for the double play. Strike him out, throw him out, and that's going to do it for the top of the first. So as we end one, no runs, one hit, no errors. We head to the bottom of the first inning. Scoreless, you're watching the Centennial Bank State Baseball Championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. For every moment, for every memory, from that first car, to your first home, to your first child, and all the highs and lows that tomorrow might bring. For everything that matters most to you and your family, there's someone right around the corner dedicated to helping you protect what you love. Your local Farm Bureau insurance agent. Farm Bureau insurance, real service, 
real people. For students, it's always more fun to include the arts when you're learning. I mean, just to have expression, to see different forms of entertainment, it always just makes it more fun. And when I heard that my mother was recording different sections that teachers were gonna see, I was excited for the students who will get to use it in their classroom. Arkansas PBS is a place where everyone can see themselves, where everyone can find themselves, where everyone can be a part of something bigger than themselves. Support your team and join the conversation on social media. Just use the hashtag ARPBS Sports. We end at the bottom of the first inning. As it's now Rogers' turn to come to the plate. They'll have Eli Marcotte, Jackson Wells, and Cade Seldomridge, the top three hitters for the Mounties come up. The rest of their lineup looks like this. You've got Ty Frakes, Carson Euchre, Noah Goodshield, Josh Lawing. Finley Bunch and JT Melson to round out the lineup for Rogers. The battery today for Springdale Harbor on the mound, Cooper Dossett. Dossett is five and one with a 3.36 ERA with 56 strike strikeouts this year. Brock Kimball is the catcher for Springdale Harbor. The Harbor's not gonna be intimidated by the stage. You know, they've been to the last four state championship games played. You gotta remember last year, didn't have a title game. Wildcats have been to the finals in 17, 18, 19, and now here in 21. So even though the last time they were technically in a title game, all the seniors were sophomores, they know what it's like to play at this big stage. Looking around the field for Springdale Harbor, Ethan Fender is at third base, Ross Fielder, shortstop, Caden Ross, second base, Cade Ratcliffe at first in the outfield, Clark Jenkins in left, Drew McClendon in center, and Walker Emmel is over in right field. Leading things off is Eli Marcotte, a 263 hitter with 20 RBI this year. First pitch to him, swung on and missed. Pumps one across, 86 to start things off. You see a heavy dose of the fastball from Dossett. Here's the 0-1, it's up high. The time comes in at 87 miles an hour. Good crowd on hand of both Harbor and Rogers fans here at Everett Field as the 1 1 is foul tipped back and takes the count 1 2. Brock Kimball took that one off the face, but then again, as a catcher, that's why you wear a helmet. Today's officials for this 6 A title game Kyle Peters is behind the plate, Paul Cates in the field, and Trey Pryor in the field. Here's the 1 2. Curveball, swing on and miss. That is big. Big curveball. Nasty breaking ball there from Dossett. He starts off 86 87 on the fastball, and he pulls the string on that curveball. And Marcotte's out there swinging a sword. So that brings up Jackson Wells, the pitcher for Rogers to the plate. He is a 337 hitter this year. Jackson Wells. Pitcher on pitcher violence here. Let's see who wins battle number one. There's a pitch that's up high and inside. Dawson's going to sit mid to upper 80s. Touched 88 there. We'll really see him start to let loose as he gets good and warm. You know, it's a nice humid night here in Benton. 1 0 is a check swing back to the pitcher. And for Harbors, Dawson, he throws him out at first base. Not going to be able to do a lot with that. 89 up around the letters. He tried to check his swing to Jackson Wells, but. Dawson gets an easy roller back to himself. Flips over to first and quickly two outs here in bottom one. So now Cade Seldomridge is at the plate. He's playing center field today, batting 280 with 16 RBI. 14 stolen bases, so he's a, a volume guy. If he gets on base, you know he's going to run. It's up high, ball one. A quicker pace from Dawson, too. It's the ball back from his catcher, Kimball, and he's going to work. Here's the 1-0 pitch, and it's in there for a strike. Takes the count to 1-1. One and one. And This is a good angle. You know, we've had great camera work, by the way, in the first game today and already so far here today on a couple of replays, but this is a great spot to see the movement he has on his fastball. 1-1's one outside. Let's count 2-1. 
works very quickly. It, it, you want to talk about contrasting pitchers between Cooper Dawson and Jackson Wells. Dawson, he gets up there and just works fast. Two ones on the way. It's outside. It's count three one. Working up in the zone is Dawson. He's challenging these Hart Rogers hitters to come up and get it. A nice job here to lay off from Seldom Ridge. And it swung on, left to the right field, and right into the glove of Walker Emmel. And that's going to do it for the first inning. So for Rogers, no runs, no hits, no errors. We head to the top of the second inning. Scoreless ball game, the 6A title game. You're watching the Centennial Bank State Baseball Championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. We never gonna stop. Cooperatives of Arkansas. Over 2,500 team members across 17 local electric distribution co-ops powering homes, farms, and industries somewhere across Arkansas. We are the Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas. Power and people. Riggs Rents, Arkansas's rental equipment provider. From aerial lifts to dirt moving machines and everything in between. Our family owned and operated business takes pride in serving our employees and customers. Riggs Rents, a proud supporter of Arkansas PBS Sports. Play ball with win with the full Ken Burns Landmark Series baseball DVD set by signing up to receive our newsletter. To do so, all you have to do is go to myarpbs.org slash sign up. So we head to the top of the second inning as Springdale Harbor is back at the plate. They will go four, five, six in the lineup with Brock Kimball, Cooper Dawson, and Drew McClendon. In the top of the first, Harper was able to get one hit. That was all they could muster. So Brock Kimball comes to the plate, batting 337 this year with 18 RBI. First pitch is swung on and fouled back. See the pace that Wells has with no one on base. He was obviously really concerned about Emil, the leadoff man, getting on base. And then thereafter, see if he, if he picks up the pace here in inning number two. Here's the 0 1, swung on, driven out the left field. Coming in as the left fielder makes a dive and a catch. Nice job by JT Melson, who was able to stretch out there and make the out. And that'll bring Cooper Dawson to the plate. Nice job by Melson, able to track that one down. The left-hander just inside the foul line, lays out and makes a nice catch. Replay confirms, still a nice catch. So that brings up Cooper Dawson as the first pitch is outside. Dawson headed to Arkansas to play baseball next year. Join a, a list of players from Harbor who've already made their way to the hill. Of course, Blake Adams from a couple years ago signed with the Hogs out of high school. No pitches outside. Called the ball and brings the count 2 0. Springdale Harbor's only been around about 13, 14 years now as far as a high school. Already established themselves as one of the ba better baseball programs in the state. Here's the 2 0 pitch. Swung on, lifted to the left field. That's the second base hit of the ball game for the Wildcats. A nice job there from Dossett. He pulls the hands in, turns on the pitch, gets himself a base knock. Pitchers always love to help themselves. Yeah. Drew McClendon comes up next. He's the center fielder for the Wildcats. That's 258 on the season with 24 RBI. Does have five home runs, which leads the team. Here's the pitch, and it's caught the in inside corner for a strike. 
You can tell this Wells just really slows the pace down, whether he's trying to get the, the runner uncomfortable or they're trying to get the batter out of his rhythm. Just really slows down the grind there on the mound. Runners on the path. Here's the 0-1, swung on, popped up on the right side. Coming in is McCain, and he'll make the catch in right field for the second out. 71 on that curveball. He's been sitting mid-80s with the fastball, so you can do the math. 13 to 15 mile an hour difference in that fastball and curveball. It's really tough to slow the swing down enough unless you recognize it immediately out of his hand. You're going to see a lot of lazy fly balls, a lot of tough swings on that breaking ball. So at the plate is Ross Felder. The shortstop for the Wildcats as a pick move back to first is safe. Ross Felder also heading to Arkansas. He's batting 299 this year with 29 RBI. A lot of production near the bottom of the lineup. You mentioned the numbers from McClendon. Felder driving in 29. Curveball is in there for a called strike. Even 70 on the gun. It's just going to be tough, tough pitch to hit, whether it's right down the middle or not. And that one was a good placement on the outer third. Two outs here in the top of the second inning. Scoreless ball game between Springdale Harbor and Rogers. Here's the 0-1. And this outside. Takes count one and one. Just imagine you're in that box, RJ, and all of a sudden you see a 70 mile an hour bender, and then all of a sudden he pumps <laughs> 84 on the black. Yeah. I mean, that's as a pitcher, I, granted, that was a little bit outside and called the ball. That's sometimes you got to throw your hands up and like, what am I supposed to do here? So one one's the count with two outs here in the top of the second. Here's the 1-1. One, one. Fastball. A little low and takes the count two and one. Nice job here to work the count back in his favor for Felder. See if he can take advantage, move that runner around. Here's the 2-1. And it's a called strike on the outside corner to bring it two and two. And we haven't talked about the elephant in the room yet. I mean, you saw that shot of Jackson Wells, and I may wait till the next time it comes up, but he's got the making of a mullet going on. In <laughs> I, did, I did see that. 2-2 Two is the count. Here's the pitch. Curveball swung on and fouled out of play. Generally, I don't talk about, like to talk about the flow, but that's a, that's a good head of salad. You know, I've noticed with the younger generation, the mullet is coming back. Yeah, there's a lot of things coming back of the younger generation that should have died in the 80s, but... I, I've seen it a lot here lately. Yeah. Here's the 2-2. This is outside, takes it full. I guess I'm probably the old guy now that says get off my lawn, but there's something... You know, we could probably have an entire inning based on the things that have come back that shouldn't have. Yeah. Good music is not one of them, though, unfortunately. And it's not well, made it depends on what music it is. Just saying. Just saying there's not a lot of good music out there. You do sound old. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Three balls, two strikes. There's two outs here in the top of the second inning. And it's outside. He misses. Walks him. Yeah, Jackson Wells starting his path back to the dugouts and had to put a foot in the ground and turn around as that one just Mitch off the outside edge. So that brings to the plate Kate Radcliffe, the first baseman, who's hitting 227 this year with 11 RBI. After not getting the call though, there, Wells is going to have to really settle in and work himself out of this jam here in the second. Runners at first and second for the Wildcats. Curve ball hits the dirt or the turf. And it's 1-0. Oh. 
By the way, if anybody's wondering here at Everett Field, down the lines on the field, it's 320. Power alleys 355 and dead center 375. One O's on the way, swung on a miss. Flags are pretty still on the right field. So ball's gonna carry. The only thing really to knock it down might be the thickness of the air. Really, really humid today. One one's account with two outs. Here's the pitch, swung on, out to short. And roll with the second, and that'll do it for the inning. Nice job there by Wells to work himself out of the mini jam. Leaves two runners on. So we head to the bottom of the second inning. Scoreless ball game. Harbor does have two hits in this one. You're watching the Centennial Bank State Baseball Championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. Now, more than ever, community is important. Local schools, businesses, and charities are in need of support. Each one of us can make a difference. When you volunteer, give, shop locally, or simply participate, you help support and grow your community. It makes us all stronger when we all are involved. I'm Susie Everett, Everett Buick GMC. We're proud to be a part of this wonderful community and want to encourage each of you to be involved in yours. Be the first to know what's happening at Arkansas PBS and get the latest sports updates. Just download the Engage Arkansas PBS app today for exclusive content. Well, Cooper Dawson makes his way back out after shutting down Rogers in the first inning, one, two, three. So he'll take on the four, five, six hitters in this half inning with Ty Frakes, Carson Euchre, and Noah Goodshield. Frakes is the first baseman today for Rogers. Hitting 260 with 18 RBI. He'll lead things off here in the bottom of the second inning. Glad to have you along wherever you may be across the great state of Arkansas as we're bringing you championship action all weekend long. Got two baseball games each day. We'll go through the schedule later on, but two tonight, or two today, two tomorrow, and two on Saturday. As the first pitch to Frakes. He's going to hit him in the back and he'll hit the first base. Yeah, breaking ball didn't break. Those are the hit by pitches you would love as a hitter. You mentioned the state championship game so far today. Congratulations to the Tuckerman girls, two way softball title, and then the Benson Lady Panthers capped off a perfect season. Handled Greenwood in the 5A championship game. Of course, we already mentioned the Van Buren Pointers won the 5A baseball crown. Here's a wild pitch that sails over Brock Kimball's head, and so that'll advance Ty Frakes to second base. After a spotless first inning for Dossett, gotten himself into trouble here. Carson Euchre at the plate right now for Rogers. As he shows bunt, pulls it back. Now they're going to throw down to second. And getting back safely was Frakes. Good throw might have got him. Frakes got off second base a little too much there. Throw to the back by Kimball. Might have been able to pick him off. You know, Carson Euchre, he, he didn't get to play a full season with Rodgers. He came late because he was participating in basketball. Going to show bunt again. Pulls it back, pops out of the glove. And that takes count to 3 0. Doesn't look comfortable this inning, this Dawson. Really missing his spots. Nice decision there by Kimball to go out and have a brief conversation with his pitcher, try to settle the nerves a bit, calm things down. 
on deck is going to be Noah Goodshield. Three O's the count as we're in the bottom of the second inning. There's a fastball on the inside half at 86 miles an hour to bring the count to 3 1. Taken all the way there. Probably a good take by Euchre. Shows bunt on 3 1, pulls it back, but it's a strike, and now we've got a full count. That's a really good pitch there, RJ. Hey, with a bust him in on the hands on the inner half. Really nothing you could do, could do with that to try to get it down, and now the count's full. Working with a man at second base. Here's the pitch. Swung on him in, struck him out. That's a great job by Dossett to be able to work from behind and come back and get the strikeout. That's where it pays to have an experienced catcher go out there and have a conversation with your pitcher just settle him down after that 3-0 count including a wild pitch that allowed the runner to get to second base and pumps that one right by Euchre. So that brings up Noah Goodshield the shortstop for the Mounties. He's batting 270 with 17 RBI this year. First pitch is high. on the way swung on and found out a play if you're Rogers you don't want to waste that ad advantage that Dawson gave you gave you a hit pit hit by pitch pass ball or excuse me a wild pitch moves him over to second with nobody out you got to find a way to move him around and get him across have to be able to take advantage of the scoring opportunities that you get against quality pitching here's the one one swung on runner goes and he'll slide in safe with a third. Called a wild pitch. And that'll take the count to 2-1. It's great heads up base running there by Frakes. See the ball not handled cleanly by the catcher Kimball. Immediately broke. Got there without a throw. You know, it seems to me like Dawson has struggled more than with a runner on. As next pitch settles high. He's because in that first inning, he, he seemed cool, calm, and collective. Mm -hmm. It's a little erratic, missing most of, mostly high in the strike zone. Here's a 3 1. That's up high and inside. So that's the issue we've seen. It's really through the first inning and a half. You can't really dissect the kind of pitcher he is based on the five or six batters that he's faced. But when he does miss, so far today, it's been up. Now third base for number 11, Josh Lawing. So now Josh Lawing comes to the plate. And he's playing third base today. And, you know, his numbers are a bit down. He's hitting 240 with only 11 RBI. But Coach Melson was telling me that he missed the entire first half of the baseball season with a broken wrist. It's a good, good reason why your numbers are going to be down. He's going to show bunt as the fastball that misses low and away. Showed that bunt early. Either knew he was going to pull it back the entire time or going to try to move that runner over. Here's the 1 0. Going to place the bunt down the first base side. And they're going to tag him. I uh, think they called it foul. The home plate umpire blew that one dead to start with. Oh, they're calling it a foul ball. And so now Coach Melson. So that's going to take a run off the board. And as you mentioned it, RJ, Coach Melson's going to want an explanation of this one. Well, and, and the only thing I can think of is, did it hit the plate? No, because it was... Well, and well he's, in, he's in foul territory when he catches it. 
So if it crosses the line and, he, and he's the first to catch it, they're going to say it's foul. And they do call it a foul ball. So the run comes off the board. Now Long's back in the box. 1-1's so one the count. Swung on and missed. Brings it to one and two. And Melson must have must have agreed because it was, it was a very brief conversation. Yep. Here's the one two. Swung on or no, it's in there, strike three. Nice job. And by Dawson pumps that one at 88. It's the second strikeout of the inning, his third in the first two innings. And now he's just an out away of getting out of this jam. So there's two outs now with a runner at first and third. As Finley Bunch comes to the plate, the second baseman. Bunch is batting 180 this year. And he's second on the team with stolen bases. Doesn't matter much right here as the runner goes, or well, he faked like he was going to second as pitch in there called a strike. In a big secondary lead over at first base is Noah Goodshield. Well, if Kimball's got the confidence in it, he may throw behind the runner and have a chance to pick off the, the Rogers base runner. Here's the 0-1. He tried to bunt it, missed, and it's 0-2. Golden opportunity here for Rogers. Had a runner on second base with nobody out. Had to find a way to scratch across the run, but Dawson's making life difficult on him. 0-2's the count, here's the pitch. Fouled back. Nice defensive swing there by Finley Bunch. It's close enough to the strike zone, he thought at least. He flips the bat out there and lives to see another pitch. Bunch is the eight hole hitter for this Mountie team. Here's the 0-2. Swung on and fouled out of play. That one at 90. The hardest we've seen Dawson throw up to this point. Well, he's, you can tell he's he's reaching back just to try to get out of this inning. Yeah. And, you know, if he does without allowing a run, that's a testament to what he's done so far because he's gone this entire inning with at least one runner on. Yeah, he's got a plus arm. He's got faith in it. Right, let's see if he can try to blow one by a bunch to get out of the frame. 0 2 the count. As it's high and outside. That's one of those pitches you don't mind if you're a coach. You know, go up and out of the zone, try to get him to chase after you fouled off two or three in a row. See if he tries to go off speed here. Oh, one, two, swung on and fouled back. Nope, just more 90. 90 mile an hour gas right at the letters. I would say he's loose now. For Rogers, they've got two runners on, but they've yet to get a base hit. Aaron walks. One, two's the count, throw over to first. Pitch is high and outside, even the count at two and two. There was an off speed pitch there. That might have been a change up, but nowhere near the strike zone. And Finley Bunch is making Dawson work at it. Cooper Dawson now thrown 34 pitches so far in the game. Delivers the 2-2 up high. We've got a full count now at three and two. Really good at bat from Bunch. Fouls off a few pitches, down 0-2. Now he's battled all the way back to 3-2, and that's going to set the runner in motion over at first. So one in the gap has the possibility of scoring a pair. Swung on a missed and he gets it out. 
Finley Bunch goes down with a strike, back-to-back -back strikeouts for Cooper Dost. As we head to the top of the third inning, scoreless ball game between Rogers and Springdale Harbor, and you're watching the Centennial Bank State Baseball Championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. This month in Passport on the PBS Video app, your on-demand library for the best of PBS. Born a slave in Jamaica, taken from a mama. This be my story. I hate the myth of Hemingway. The man is much more interesting than the myth. There is no alternative to soul. That on national TV was revolutionary. These and other shows are available with Passport on the PBS Video app. Download it today. My name is Al Lopez, Papa Rap in the house. I live in Northwest Arkansas via Puerto Rico. Been here since 1994, since the 94, and really, Arkansas PBS is the one that has taught me about this great community that we have here. Wonderful, beautiful, so much programming, tanta programación for children, for grown-ups. Porque es el canal de Arkansas. This is a real Arkansas channel. Back here in Benton, scoring this ball game in the 6 8 title game. And now's a good time to tell you about our baseball student athlete of the year. And he comes from Conway as Anthony Snyder, the catcher for the Wampus Cats, has had an outstanding year, not only on the diamond, but the senior had a 3.8 GPA and plans to attend and play baseball at Southern Arkansas University. So, congratulations to Anthony Snyder, our student athlete of the year. Come here, Mule Rider. We head to the top of the third inning where for Springdale Harbor, they will go with their 9-1-2 hitters in Caden Ross, Walker Emmel, and Clark Jenkins. So Caden Ross, a left-handed batter, will step into the box to start the top of the third inning. Jackson Wells fires a fastball outside and it'll start off 1-0. Number one, second baseman, Ross. Ross is a 2.39 batter this year with four RBI. His second pitch is in here for a strike. Like the old school look there from Ross. No batting gloves. One one is low. This little little tape. On a dirty wrap in the bottom of the barrel. That's what we like to see. Two balls, one strike. Pitch on the way as it's way outside to go three and one. The outfield alignment for Rogers. JT Melson is in left. Cade Seldom Ridge is in center. And Jake McCain over in right field. And they're playing extremely shallow. As the 3-1 pitch is called a strike on that outside corner. They really are. Anything over their head, Ross is going to be running for a while. 3-2 pitch is fouled away. Both pitchers in this game now have thrown 36 pitches. As Jackson Wells delivers the 3 2. And it's inside. He'll walk. Caden Ross, the nine hole hitter. Good at bat by Ross to start this third inning. Flips the lineup over. Have a chance for Walker Emmel. He already has a base hit in this contest to swing it with a runner on. So Walker Emmel, who led things off to start this game, got on with a base hit to start the first inning. Curveball hits the turf. The one thing for Jackson Wells, you notice he slows things down with the runner on base as he checks over at first. He's only faced one batter in this contest without a runner on base. Yeah. Well, now two after this inning. So it's if you don't count the start of the game, he's he's constantly had action on the base pass. 
That's exactly what you want to do if you're Springdale Harbor. They just haven't been able to push them around and push them over. 1 0 is the count. Runner at first base. As it's a ball low and away. Makes the count to 2 0. Two ones in the turf. Bounce to home plate, and that brings the 3-0. That's a good pick back there by Marcotte. And if this is not turf and this is dirt, that may be all the way to the backstop. Not a lot of funny bounces on the turf, though. You know what you're going to get. 3-0 is on the way, and it's high and in tight. So back-to-back -back walks now for Jackson Wells. And now they're going to have a meeting on the mound. Wells just has not looked comfortable with runners on base. See if they can calm him down. His pitch count now at 41. Just two innings of work. So the conference on the mound is take about 20 or 30 seconds, and that'll bring Clay Jenkins to the plate, the Arkansas State commitment. He got on the bags back in the first inning with fielder's choice, and so he'll be awaiting the conference on the mound to break up. Three walks with one strikeout, Jackson Wells. But the number on the board that matters most, no runs given up up to this point. Let's see if he can settle in and try to work himself out of this jam. We talked about it before the ball game. Springdale Harbor has won a state title. It was back in 2018. They've been in the game five times. As for Rogers, they've been in five times, but they've never had a title. So Jenkins is at the plate with runners at first and second. Pick move back to second, and they got him. Great pick move. Noah Goodshield able to sneak behind the runner. Caden Ross got off just a little too far and a perfect throw from Wells, gunned him down at second. So now there's only one runner on the bags with one out here in the top of the third inning. Just a perfect throw for Wells. Good shield gets the tag right on the helmet. Easy call for Trey Pryor out at second. Pitch is on the way and it's outside. Jackson Wells with a leg kick, swung on and missed. Came with the breaking ball that time at 77. Brings the count at one and one. Now pick move back to first. As Walker Immel gets back safely. I would imagine Walker Immel's Paying close attention to Jackson Wells and his pick move. If you recall back in the first inning when Walker Immel got on, there were a lot of moves over to first base. Yeah. Including one from the catcher. Yeah. So Rogers is not going to let Harbor become comfortable on the base pass. That's for certain. Here's a pitch that bounces to the plate to bring the count to two and one. Great job by Marcotte there. You can see the tilt, lean the chest forward, just dead in the ball, off the turf, keeps it in front, keeps the runner at first base. Fundamentals. Two one pitches on the way. It's outside and goes three one. Well, Jackson Wells. Got out of a small jam when he had runners at first and second, but he's threatening to get into that situation again. Yeah, he's flirting with the title of effectively wild. Pick move over to first. He does have a great pick move. He does. Both at first and second. 
what doesn't show up on the on the pitch counter is the number of throws over to first. You can add another 10 or 12 of those already. Three ones on the way. It's low and outside. He walks it. That is the third walk in a row here in the top of the third inning. Command not there tonight for Jackson Wells. Been able to avoid damage up to this point, but you mentioned it, RJ. Three consecutive walks. Did benefit from the pickoff at second base, but back into another pickle. So there's one out here in the top of the third inning. As at the plate, Ethan Fender struck out back in the third. Here's the pitch as it's a called strike right down Broadway that time. It's 0-1. Nice job by Wells there. Took a little bit off. Came across at 80 miles an hour. That out of third. Get ahead in the count. Get a little confidence going. Here's the 0-1. Popped up. Shallow center field. Coming in to make the play is Seldom Ridge. And there's two outs. Seldom Ridge had to cover a lot of ground to come in and catch that fly ball to center. But really good use of the off-speed pitches there from Jackson Wells. And even though he's walked three in this frame, has a chance to get out of it unscathed if he can set one more down. So two outs, top of the third inning. Scoreless ball game between Harbor and Rogers in the 6A title game. And that'll bring up Brock Kimball now. He is the four-hole hitter for Springdale Harbor. 337 average, 18 RBIs, going to Pitt Pittsburgh State. Division II school there in Kansas. Really good baseball Division II school. Yeah. The Gorillas. And they're usually pretty good in football as well. They have been. So Kimball sees a fastball that misses the outside. Kimball back in the second inning flied to left field. And actually that was a was more of a line drive that was it was just a spectacular play when they, they dove for it and caught it. Here's the 1-0. Swung on, popped up out of play. So one one's account. There was a nice slider that was in there for a call and strike to bring the count to one and two. A really nice pitch there on the outer third. Kimball could do nothing with it. I can watch that one go by for strike two. One ball, two strikes, trying to get out of the inning. Here's the pitch. Third ball in there, strike three, and he does it. Catches the top of the zone. He walks three in the inning, RJ, though, but finds a way to get out of the jam unscathed, and we're still scoreless. We're headed to the bottom of the third inning, and you're watching the Centennial Bank State Baseball Championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. Sports is, is so important to this state and the fabric of the state. And I appreciate Arkansas PBS doing all the state title games. And that makes it available for not just the fans in central Arkansas, or south Arkansas, but fans around the entire state. I can only think of the kids in small towns, and this is the biggest moment maybe in their sports careers. And they have that keepsake of having that game on TV to have with them the rest of their lives. Thanks, George. Appreciate it. At Big Red Stores, we're always proud to sponsor, support, and partner up with many events and activities throughout the community. Among them, high school championships throughout the state of Arkansas. At Big Red Stores, our team members are always ready to assist you to make your visit with us a pleasant one. And at Big Red Stores, we recognize that none of our support or ability to serve the community is possible without you. That's why at Big Red Stores, you're always the MVP of the Big Red team. 
Big Red Stores, now more convenient than ever. Down, go with the read. Experience the action over and over and over again next week. You can watch all the championship games on YouTube.com slash Arkansas PBS. You'll find the football title games, the basketball championships, baseball and softball coming up next week as well. I do two things. I watch it on YouTube when I'm on the road, you know, but when I'm at the house and want to recap what happened in, say, 2017, I get the DVD with Eminem Productions. There you go. See, see how I work both those in there like that? Yeah, so the thing about it is we got to break down the film, too. we got to critique ourselves. I mean, got to do it. And so when I'm on the road traveling, I, I'm able to watch it on YouTube, and then whenever I want to sit back and watch let my kid when she's 12 or something, go back and see what Dad used to do. <laughs> see what I used to have a little talent? Yeah. Yes. Okay, so we have Rodgers at the plate as JT Melson's going to be leading things off. It's the 9 1 2 hitters. As that time, Cooper Dawson fires a strike in there on the outside corner. Melson made a nice diving catch in the field earlier. See if he can help his offense get things going. 0 1 swung on back at the box. That's the first base hit for Rodgers in the ballgame. Nice job by Melston. Just waiting for that one to travel. Goes right back up the middle with it. Gets the leadoff man on for the Mounties. So now Eli Marcotte is going to be at the plate. He struck out back in the first inning. Cooper Dossett working on some nice little streak for himself. Through a six game, excuse me, a six inning shutout as they took down Bryant. who was believed to be the number one team in the state. Yep. Harbor took down the Hornets three to nothing. No hitter combined between he and Ross Felder. Struck at 11. Bunt being shown by Marcotte and it's fouled at the plate. So far, the box score in this one, Harbor, no runs, two hits, no errors, while Rogers, no runs, one hit, and er no errors. Eli Marcotte at the plate, showing bunt once again as they throw it down to first and back safely easily. He was able to pull the bat back, so it brings the count to one and one. The one thing that's been pretty obvious is these teams get a runner on base. There's a, a lot of concern from both the pitcher and the catcher to make sure they don't steal extra bases. A great pick there. There's a lot of speed be between both these teams, and, and both coaches noticed that when I was talking to them prior to the ball game. And, and I think it's more of a respect thing, mainly because of the fact that they've already seen each other this year. They've already split in their series, and so they, they kind of know each other quite well. You're not going to surprise anybody at this point. Here's the 1-1 with a bunt. Put down back to the pitcher's mound. They throw it to first, get the out, but it advances the runner, Melson, to second base. Great job by Marcon. Gets the, the sacrifice down, moves the runner into scoring position. And we'll see it again coming up this weekend, too. I believe it's the 1A championship game. Izzard County and Viola are going to meet for the fifth time. Three matches in the championship game, really not all that rare. But it does give, usually give for a good contest. There's going to be no surprises. So whoever plays better on a given day is going to take home a championship. Jackson Wells is at the plate now. Rounded out to the pitcher back in the first inning. Curveball. This is low and outside. One out, bottom of the third inning. On their second, they throw back, and well, I don't think the second baseman was ready for that one. Caden Ross. It was about three feet away from the bag. Here 
Here's the 1-0. Fastball misses high and outside. 2-0. And here's count here for Jackson Wells. 337 on the season. A chance to help himself, maybe give himself and his team a lead. As the 2-0 pitch goes to 3-0. Kim think to the outfield is going to score. Melson, he's getting a pretty nice secondary lead. You can see him on the bottom of the screen. Takes a nice lead to start, but he bounds out of the screen, but that one's going high for ball four. Four straight balls puts Jackson Wells on the bags. And so that brings up Cade Seldenridge. Looks like coming on to pinch run for Springer for Rogers is going to be Chris Francisco. He's going to be at first base. As Seldom Ridge is at the plate, he flied to right field back in the first inning. Well, Francisco is going to be a courtesy runner in high school baseball. You can have a courtesy runner, which means essentially a free pinch runner for both your pitcher and your catcher without actually having to take those players out of the game. And Harbor is going to get a, a visit to the mound. As Coach Dustin Hellcamp will have a chat with this pitcher. First and second now, one out. And so now they're going to have a meeting on the mound. And with one out here in the bottom of the third inning, and you've got runners at first and second, he's going to find a way to calm down and, and throw strikes at this point. And because so far in this game, really, He's only allowed three batters on, one hit by pitch, two walks. Outside of that, so far, Cooper Dossett has had four strikeouts so far in the game. Harbor does have some action going in the bullpen. There's Tyler Ridley, number six for the Wildcats, starting to loosen up. And I think at some point, RJ, with these pitch counts already being at 52 and 45, respectively, they're going to have to go to the bullpen eventually. Yeah. We're not going to see more than likely unless they settle down and really start to pick up the pace. This one's going to be decided by the extra arms. So at the plate, Seldom Ridge. As a curveball drops in there, called a strike. I, li I like the, the thought there. Yeah, runners on base. He'll we'll be sitting dead red, trying to get a fastball after a couple base on balls. And he bends one over for a strike and gets ahead in the count. One's the count, runners at first and second. Thought about the bunt, pulled it back, got away from the catcher. Runners were going to advance to second and third. And Seldom Ridge did a nice job of just avoiding that one. And coming right at him. But the wild pitch allows the two runners to advance. Now two in scoring position for Seldom Ridge, who has 16 RBIs on the season. And now Coach Helmkamp will talk to the home plate umpire. I think he's going to ask if he actually went around. As he tried to get out of the way, Coach Helmkamp's asking did the bat come around. He said no, so. One one's the count. Field in all the way around for Harper. As Selim Ridge at the plate. Curveball swung on and missed. Brings the count to one and two. Another good breaking ball there from Dawson. He's got great stuff. Does. He's just a little wild. Been a little wild so far in this one. One out, bottom of the third inning. Pass ball misses inside. Two and two. It's really missed a spot there. That might have been a strike, but when the catcher stands up, he wants it high, then all of a sudden he pumps one across right above the knees. It's tough to get that call. Runners at second and third for Rogers. You can say a strike should be a strike, but 
when you miss your spot and the catcher has to go that far for it. 2 2 swan and missed. Didn't matter there as he gets the strikeout, his fifth of the contest. But when a catcher has to really stretch out for it, say if you're going high and away and all of a sudden that pitch ends up right across the middle, you got to reach across for it. The umpire is rarely going to give you the benefit of the doubt and give you the call. Yeah. Well, now that brings up the four hole hitter, Ty Frakes, who was hit by a pitch back in the second inning. And for Cooper Dawson, he is one out away from getting out of this inning unharmed. First pitch to him is a fastball. Caught that outside corner. Call a strike. Still sitting in the upper 80s. That one 89, so the velocity is still there. Even though the pitch count now is over 50. We're still in the third. Here's the 1 Fastball. Missed. Outside that time. It's a good spot, though. Low away. A little velocity on it. One one's on the way. Missed it outside again. Brings the count to two and one. Eighteen RBIs on the year for Freaks. Here's the two one pitch. Nice ball missed low below the knees. Brings the count now to three and one. He's got a bag open at first base in case he walks him. That just make it bases loaded. I think we're seeing the catcher, Brock Kimmel, get a little frustrated with the lack of calls going his way. Well, if you notice the umpire set up on the inside part of the plate. Here's the three one curveball, call a strike. And Bobby, you and I talked about this during the during the break. You're seeing a lot of umpires because of the angle across the plate that they can see set up on that inside part of the plate. You know, it kind of takes the, the catcher out of the equation. You can maybe see more of the plate. You're not blocked by the catcher. 3-2, swung on and fouled back. You know, really, it's all a comfort level. You know, I, I, there are 99% of us watching this game have no desire to get behind the plate anyway. Yeah. But you, you got to be comfortable back there. So you, as long as you're consistent with it, which he has been up to this point, but a lot of times if you set up on the inside, it's that outside pitch that you may not have to get the benefit of the doubt from. But you're also not shielded as much by the catcher, and so ideally you're seeing more of the plate. Yeah. I think the frustration for some catchers is they think that they catch that outside corner opposite of where he's set up, and here's one that sails over the catcher's head, play at the plate. He's safe. That's the first run of the ball game. That one well out of the zone, RJ. That one sails to the backstop. And a cheap run there for the Mounties. So JT Nelson scores on a wild pitch. That puts Jackson Wells over at third base. And Ty Franks is sitting at first after he walked. So now Carson Euchre, the designated hitter, comes to the plate. He struck out back in the second inning. Can we go back out and talk to his pitcher? Out of mound visits for this inning. So if Harbor goes back out there, they're going to have to make a change. Harbor coaching staff, that is. So the meeting at the mound's over with as Euchre awaits his first pitch. Euchre's the five hole hitters for Rogers. So far, they have sent five players to the plate. Single back up the middle, sacrifice, walk, strike out, another walk. These are the type of innings that give you heartburn as a coach. Runners on the corners, two outs here in the bottom of the third inning. Fastball up high. Missing everything up in the zone. You know, as a coach, maybe even as a player, you can live with the, the rockets and the, the deep fly balls, but it's the bloops, the little bleeders into the outfield and the unforced errors as far as base on balls that, that really give you nightmares. Pick move goes back to first, and he was back easily. Yeah. 
Here's the one. Oh, it sails high again. Play at the plate. They throw it. Scores as the ball got away from the pitcher. And it's now two to nothing. Well, that ball ricocheted almost all the way back to the plate, and Kimball able to get there quickly, but his throw to the covering pitcher, Dossett, well off the mark. A good throw. Might have had a chance to get the runner as we see it there. But that one well off the mark, and two runs on two wild pitches in this inning for the Mounties. And that brings the count to 2 0 for Carson Euchre. Just self inflicted wounds for Dawson on the mound. 2 balls no strikes. Pitch is on the way up high. 3 0. I can't speak for coach Helmkamp but put him on here on four straight balls the day may be done for Dawson. If they do have action in the bullpen. Tyler Ridley has been warming. Here's the pitch up high and walks. So, so far in this inning, that is now the third batter to walk here in the inning. And that is going to do it for Dawson. Five strikeouts, four walks, two and two thirds innings. Gave up just one hit. But two runs, also bull. Two runners on the base pass going to be responsible for him as well. Well, I, we, we say that it, it's a second it, it, second visit this inning. Okay. No, they, they had a, uh, a. Yeah, there it goes. OK, you're right. So we will have the new pitcher when we come back as you're watching the Centennial Bank State Baseball Championships in Arkansas PBS Sports. Throughout the years of exploring Arkansas, we've taken you to quite a few awe-inspiring places, mainly as seen at ground level. But exploring all those natural wonders and iconic landmarks takes on a whole new exhilarating perspective from a bird's eye view. Welcome to Exploring Arkansas from Above. We'll showcase the natural state like never before. Join us for the high adventure in 2021. You know, I think sports are really big to a lot of people. And because it's an important part of our fabric in our community, and the one good thing about what I've seen is it's high quality production. You know, you think of the small communities all over Arkansas, it's a big deal that they can turn on the TV or DVR or whatever, and know they're gonna get a quality product. And so I think it just expands the, uh, the focus of what PBS is doing. You know, Arkansas PBS is doing a great job, and, and I think it's part of education. Your new pitcher for the Springdale Harbor Wildcats is Tyler Ridley, who comes in with a 7-0 record. He's had 66 strikeouts this year and a 1.06 ERA. And that is the pitcher that will replace Cooper Dawson. Pretty good numbers to be able to, to pull out of your pen. Obviously, probably been a starter for majority of the season for the Wildcats. But you got to pull out all the stops here. And more importantly, got to find a way to shut down this inning with no further damage as Rogers has benefited from base on ball after base on ball and two wild pitches have allowed two runs to score. So that'll bring up Noah Good Shield to the plate. Good Shield back in the second inning. He walked with runners at first and second and two outs here in the third. Curve ball misses. So Dawson is going to stay in the game as the designated hitter, but he has been lifted as a pitcher. Courtesy of Mr. Walter Woody. Here's the 1-0. Shane jump is at the knees, called a strike. Two outs, bottom of the third inning. Two nothings are score. Here's the 1-1. One -one. Fastball misses outside. It's got to come in and throw strikes. That's been the biggest issue so far for this Harbor pitching staff. Obviously, Dossett, he walks four, two and two thirds innings of work. Two one, curveball in the dirt. Makes the three and one.
Got to give a lot of credit though to these Rodgers hitters. A state championship game, you want to go up there and swing the bat, but they've been patient. They've made the Harbor pitchers throw strikes, and they haven't been able to do it consistently yet. 3-1 is a fastball right down Broadway. That brings it full at 3-2. and two. Well, The runner's going to be in motion now. So anything into the outfield. Should score at least one. One to the gap. Could push across two. Turned out to be a pretty night here in Benton. Three twos to count. And it's in there. Called strike three. A great pitch on the black 81. And able to come in and get out of the jam. Well, Rogers opens up the scoring here in the third inning. They score two runs, only get one base hit. There were no ears in the field, two left on. We head to the top of the fourth inning where the Mounties, they lead it 2 0. And you're watching the Centennial Bank State Baseball Championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. Baseball, the most watched series in PBS history, is coming home. Wait, there he goes. See how baseball became our national pastime and why this Ken Burns series remains an American classic. Sign up for our newsletter to be entered to win the entire Ken Burns baseball series on DVD. John's Honda, your hometown dealer for sales and service of Honda motorcycles, ATVs, Honda generators, and Honda lawnmowers. Family owned and operated since 1967, John's Honda offers factory certified technicians and experienced sales staff. The Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas. Over 2,500 team members across 17 local electric distribution co-ops, powering homes, farms, and industries somewhere across Arkansas. We are the Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas. Power and people. If you want to download photos from the game, you can do so. Go to myarpbs.org slash photos and the great Kai Caddy out there working the digital shutter. Mm -hmm. I I told him not to come up here and take pictures. We didn't need that for people to see. Well, you know, to be quite honest, there probably are too many UCA Bears floating around here. There, there are. Well, I mean, I'm just happy to know that Arkansas PBS Sports employs a lot of UCA grads. <laughs> <laughs> they, they really do. <laughs> I, I am. I, I want to thank Ed for uh, for getting all those and Courtney Pledger and everybody involved for getting UCA grads at Arkansas PBS Sports. They might want to branch out a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the first pitch swung on, and it's a five-three put out of Josh Lawing. Or excuse me, not uh, that's Cooper Dawson. Yeah, really nice throw there by Lawing. Fires it across and retires the designated hitter. So now Drew McClendon comes up. He flied out to right field back in the second inning. All right, number 15, center fielder Drew McClendon. Jackson Wells for Rogers back on the mound as fires in the pitch to McClendon, which is going to be a curveball. Call to strike. Oh, one's on the way. Curveball inside misses, and it's one and one. Start to see a few more catchers. Marcotte included there. Go down to almost laying on the ground. Old, old school Benito Santiago style. No Salvador Perez with the Royals has kind of adopted it of late. Yadi Molina with the Cardinals. The curveball that hits the dirt. Count two and one. That might be a ball. If he catches that cleanly, that might have been a strike. Yeah. Two-nothing's our score. Rogers on top of Harbor as we're on the top of the fourth inning. There's a fastball pumped in on the inside corner to bring it to two and two. Still good velocity from Jackson Wells. That one in at 87. As a pitcher, you always want to come back with that shutdown inning after the team gives you a lead. Fastball misses low and away. Brings the count full at three and two. We talked about command with Dawson. Command with Wells has kind of been an issue as well. He's already walked four. 
Three balls, two strikes. Here's the pitch. Third ball swung on, missed. He dropped it. Now they'll throw it to first for the second out. Third strike out there for Wells. Now Ross Felder comes to the plate. He walked back in the second inning. I will say that Jackson Wells seems like he's gotten more comfortable as the game's gone on. And he's adapted a little bit better to the strike zone. Certainly working much quicker with no one on base. This is the first time he's faced back to back batters, though, in this contest with no one on base. Yeah. First pitch to Ross Felder is up high and tight. And so that'll bring the count to 1 and 0. Fastball swung on and fouled right back into the net. Brings the count to one and one. Ross Felder, the seven hole hitter for Springdale Harbor. Talked about it earlier that he's headed to the University of Arkansas to play baseball. As the one one pitch is in there, called a strike to bring the count one two. Pace certainly picks up. We've talked about it a few times already, but nobody on the base pass for Wells. He goes to work. Two outs here in the top of the fourth. Of course, as soon as I say that, they can't decide on what pitch he wants to throw. Here's Jackson Wells with the pitch. Swung on and missed, and he goes one, two, three here in the fourth. The best inning so far for Jackson Wells. As we head to the bottom of the fourth inning, Rogers two, Harbor nothing. You're watching the Centennial Bank State Baseball Championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. I'm Logan Duvall. And I'm Lauren McCullough, and we are pleased to represent Arkansas PBS as the host of these first installments of the new segment series, Good Roots. Good Roots will explore the culture and innovation of small towns across the state of Arkansas. Tune in for Arkansas Week or find us online. You know, I think sports are really big to a lot of people. And because it's an important part of our fabric in our community, and one good thing about what I've seen is it's high quality production. You know, you think of the small communities all over Arkansas, it's a big deal that they can turn on the TV or DVR or whatever, and know they're gonna get a quality product. And so I think it just expands the, uh, the focus of what PBS is doing. You know, Arkansas PBS is doing a great job, and, and I think it's part of education. Don't forget, when you sign up to receive emails from Arkansas PBS, you're automatically entered to win the entire Ken Burns baseball DVD collection. Let's go to myarpbs.org slash sign up. So the Mounties are back at the plate as Josh Lawing is at the plate. And first pitch comes in there by Tyler Ridley, called a ball, and so that brings the count 1-0. Lawing back in the second inning, struck out looking. Swung on, fouled off on the harbor side. Ridley did a nice job coming in that last inning, getting a strike out to get out of the jam. We'll see what he can do as far as working from a clean slate. One ball, one strike. There's a change jump at 81 that misses high. It counts two and one. Here's the 2-1. Swung on and missed. Curve ball outside. Brings the count 2-2. Two -two. Good late movement on that. This bit straight down. Coming in at 74. Nice change of pace. This really shouldn't be all that surprising. He rambled off his ERA earlier. Less than two. Curve ball popped up on the back of the dirt at second base, and that's the first down. And that'll bring up Finley Bunch now. The eight-hole hitter for 
the Mounties who struck out back in the second inning. All right, number three, second baseman, Finley Bunch. First pitch is swung on and fouled. And so that'll bring the count to 0 1. Tyler Ridley showing coming in relief. He's not afraid to attack the strike zone. Doesn't throw quite as hard as Dossett. He looks like he's going to sit in the low 80s as yeah. that butt attempt goes foul. So the change of velocity, change the bat speed there for Rodgers and maybe affect them just enough where he could maybe settle in. So 0 2 is the count with one out here in the bottom of the fourth inning. As that one's fouled back. We saw this in his first at bat, the Finley Bunch. Even though he struck out, he made Dossett work. A lot of late swings just to get the barrel on the ball, foul it off to live to fight another pitch. He fell down 0 2 in his first at bat and battled all the way back to a full count before he went down on strikes. See if he can battle back in here against Ridley. By the way, we we started this game at seven or at uh, seven oh five, and we are now an hour and twenty four minutes in as the O two pitch is swung on and he strikes him out. So that's the second out here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Not a lot of pace to it. A lot of base runners, a lot of pick moves, a lot of walks, long at bats. That's the recipe for a longer baseball game. And Ridley's come in and done exactly what you want him to do. Face three batters, he retired three. So JT Melson is at the plate. He's the only Mountie that's gotten a hit tonight. As the first curveball is up high for a ball. He got that hit back in the third inning. Later came around to score the first run for the Mounties. As the changeup misses outside, brings the count to 2-0. Oh. Bottom of the fourth inning. Two outs. Mounties lead 2-0 as the 2-0 pitch is high. Brings the count to 3-0. Here's the 3-0. It's up high and he walks it. The last thing you wanted to do if you're Tyler Ridley, walk the nine hole. Allow Rodgers. Not only a base runner, but the top of the line that's come back up to the plate. So Eli Marcotte comes to the plate. And Bay's 0 for 1 with a sack. Struck out back in the first inning. Fastball sails high. And it's 1 0. Brock Kimball jumped up out of his stance there, almost expecting a stolen base attempt from Melson. There's a curveball up high. It misses 2 0. Just retiring the first three batters he faced. Ridley, off thrown six straight out of the zone. Two balls, no strikes. As a curveball in there for a strike, and it's two and one. Hey, don't forget, coming up tomorrow, we start baseball action at 10 a.m. Breakfast and baseball. As a two-way baseball game between Southside B Branch and Woodlawn takes place. And it's two one swung on and missed. It brings the count to two and two. Soccer fires up tomorrow as well. And the weekend, O champions. 
So more Northwest Arkansas schools going to battle it out for the 6A girls title, Bentonville West and Fayetteville. A little footy action. Here's the 2-2. Runner goes. Ball gets past the catcher. Plains the count to three and two, and it advances JT Melson to second base. No soccer getting ready to go tomorrow. And if you've not ever been out here to Benton, the facilities are really neat because the football stadium, which is also the soccer facility, and then you've got the baseball and softball all right here together in a big sports complex. Yeah. Pretty neat. Buy one ticket, you can watch sports for three different games. Baseball, softball, soccer. Spend all day out here. Three balls, two strikes for Eli Marcotte. Curveball swung on, back at the box. Second hit of the ball game. They're going to send him home. Here comes the throw of the plate, and they're going to tag him out up the line. Great yeah. throw by the center fielder, Drew McClendon. A little up the line, but plenty of velocity, plenty on that throw from McClendon, and gun down the runner with plenty to spare. He's out by five or six steps. Kimball able to apply the tag, and Harbor gets out of the inning. So for Harbor, no runs, one and hit. Nobody left on. We head to the top of the fifth inning. Excuse me, that's for Rogers, that is. You're watching the Centennial Bank State Baseball Championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. For every moment, for every memory, from that first car to your first home, to your first child, and all the highs and lows that tomorrow might bring. For everything that matters most to you and your family, there's someone right around the corner dedicated to helping you protect what you love. Your local Farm Bureau Insurance agent. Farm Bureau Insurance. Real service, real people. This past year has felt like a marathon in many ways, with each of us working to reach the finish line. We are happy we can make this journey together. Arkansas PBS is over halfway to our goal of adding 3,000 members by June 30th. If we succeed, we've received $21,000 from our Ambassador Circle. If you're not yet a member, you can help us reach the finish line. Call or go online today. Watch the PBS programs you love whenever you want with Arkansas PBS Passport. Learn more about this on-demand streaming benefits at myarpbs.org slash passport. We head to the top of the fifth inning where Rogers leads Harbor two to nothing. I'm RJ Hawk along with Bobby Swafford. And Jackson Wells brings himself back onto the mound after having a really impressive fourth inning. And Bobby, I Got to be impressed with what he's done so far in this one because uh, he struggled a little bit early on, but he's really kind of gained composure and has done well. Yeah, you mentioned by far the best inning of work the last time out. One, two, three for the first time today. The first time he faced more than two batters back to back without a runner on base. And he just looked a lot more comfortable with no one on the base path. He's able to focus on the batter's box and went to work. And now he's got a two nothing lead. And of course, if you're Rogers and you're that coaching staff, you want to find a way to, to duplicate that at the bottom of the order coming up for Harbor. And then you find yourself in the late innings with a lead. Here's Cade Ratcliffe at the plate. Fastball is going to hit him. Well, we'll talk him up and then. Happens every time. That's right. Now the curse is real. So Caden Ross will come to the plate now after walking back in the third inning. And Harbor's got a runner at first base at the top of the fifth inning. Two nothing, Rogers on top of Harbor. If you ever think that you can't speak something into existence, watch a sporting event and listen to what they say. Every time. Well, you know, Razorback broadcaster Phil Elson, he and I, we, we did a lot of Arkansas Traveler games to together. And he was he's under the mindset, and you can follow him on Twitter, and he believes this, that it's okay to speak into existence a no hitter, you know, if somebody's talking, you can freely talk about it as that pitch goes in there for a ball. But you can freely talk about if a, a pitcher is throwing a no hitter, he's got a perfect game, things of that nature, because he believes there's no such thing as an announcer's jinx. 
Yeah. I on the I on the other hand. It's amazing Phil still has the job, to be honest. Here's a one oh and <laughs> you'll, you'll you'll find a manager. You know, I don't know if Phil's called a lot of games yeah. for the Travelers and then the Razorbacks. I'm surprised one of those managers haven't said, you know what? How about you don't call our games anymore? Well, you know what's funny is that um, when he was with the Travelers, as throws over and he's safe, um, it was two mindsets because there was a manager. I, I'll, I'll never forget that this is one of my first years. There was a manager that di also did not believe in the broadcaster's jinx, did not believe in the player jinx, and freely talked about it as the two pitches in there called the ball. It's now ball three. But the manager openly talked about if a kid had a no-no a no -no going into the ball game. Now, on the flip side, a couple years later, a new manager comes in. He was the complete opposite. <laughs> Here's the 3-0, and it misses outside. Now you have a hit by pitch, and now a walk as Radcliffe's going to go to second, and Caden Ross will go to first. Wells, five walks, one hit batter, and really any trouble that he's had to pitch around has been self-inflicted. Yeah, you know, you're exactly right. And so now Springdale Harbor's back to the top of the lineup is Emil's going to be up, but not until they have a meeting on the mound. As the pitch counts up there, 68 through just four innings of work. Matt Melson's out there, brought the infield in to talk, and I don't imagine he's going to he's going to pull him right now. But I would imagine you're just going over the the situation at this point. Now that you've got runners at first and second. But a lot of this conversation is one, what you're going to do situation like you're talking about. But two, just tell your pitcher, settle down. Like they haven't hit you yet. They have two hits in four innings. Yeah. But they've had a ton of base runs because we put them on base. Again, five walks, another hit batter. Just find a way to, to throw it over the plate and then make them beat you. It's easier said than done. We're not out there 60 feet and six inches away from home plate trying to throw a baseball over. A piece of hardened rubber. <laughs> Immel's at the plate. He had a single back in the first. He walked in the third. Runners at first and second. No outs. Top of the fifth. As they look to throw back to second. Bobby, I mean, if you notice, the left fielder's playing more to the left field line. There is a massive gap in between the left and center. Yep, and there's a big hole on the left side of the infield as well. As the shortstop, good shield, trying to keep that runner close. Just out of the view of the camera there, our center field shot. And for Emil, and this is a guy on the season that's hitting 312. He's had a triple and a home run this year. Fastball is going to get underneath the catcher. Runner's going to head to third. And so now you've got runners on the corners. I call that one a pass ball. You hear from the official score. Both runners advance. And now things are really dicey. This Rogers squad has got a 2-0 lead. You know, it is interesting when you play on turf. The fact when you get a pass ball, Instead of going and grabbing it and throwing, yeah. you slide to the ball because you can slide on the turf. Yep. It's a different game, especially for the infielders, base runners. Here's the 1-0. Fastball in there for a strike. And we were talking about how the soccer finals are tomorrow. Normally they play the finals at the University of Arkansas, like the other sports, but they're going to be playing on a turf field tomorrow, so that's a different game even though most of the high schools at the, the large school level are used to playing soccer on a turf field. One one's the count with runners on the corners. They're swung on and found out of play. You don't think of a, you know, things changing that much because of the playing surface, but it really does. But it's so much better. Well, it's debatable. You know, some people like that old school tradition of playing on grass and dirt. Well, you know, like earlier today when we had the the 5A game, it rained for a little bit. We had a, a minor delay. Had that game been played at the University of Arkansas, we would have had an hour delay for 15 minutes. Yep. No, you're right. There are some pluses and some minuses of both. There's a 1-2 in there for a called strike three. That's a great pitch on the black. 
as much as we've talked about the, the wildness of Wells, he's been able to come back and, and pitch around it. So now Clark Jenkins comes up. He walked back in the third inning. He got on because of a fielder's choice in the first. Throw over to first, he's back safely. And honestly, when you think about the turf, you wouldn't think that would really affect the soccer game as much as it would with, say, baseball. Well, it's just, you know, a ball is going to roll yeah. true, but it's also going to roll farther because there's less resistance. Here's the first pitch that's fouled out of play down the right field side. I like how earlier in the broadcast, maybe that was earlier today, we, we were saying that you were not very good with Science classes, <laughs> and now you're talking about resistance and, and force. Yeah, you know. Have lanes. I know when to stay in mine <laughs> and when to veer outside of it. The ball's one strike. Curve ball, chop foul down the third base side. We established earlier we've got a running total that <laughs> math, geography, and science are not my wheelhouse. Yeah. Ancient alien theory is, however, in my wheelhouse. So if you'd like to discuss that in a, a rain delay later on, we could do so. No, that's <laughs> <laughs> we could. We can really dive into that. You heard they came out and said their UFOs are real. Well, that was never a question. Well, it was a question, but saw that on the news the other night. They said the Coast Guard seeing unidentified yeah. flying ob well, objects. Earlier today, we saw Van Buren's Gilrath put a UFO out in yeah. orbit. It's a good monster point. shot of a home run. Very true. Here's the 0-2. Swung on and missed. And this is high heat. Catcher wanted it up. He threw it up and blew it right past Clark Jenkins. For his sixth strikeout. Jackson Wells is dealing right now. After allowing two guys on, one hit by a pitch, one walked, he's come back with back-to-back -back strikeouts. All right, number four, Ethan Fender. And we've said it probably two or three times already. Worked himself into a jam, but now just one out away from getting out of it. First pitch is a changeup low. It's a good off-speed pitch there on the outside corner to start off. Ethan Fender doesn't get the benefit of the call, but a really good pitch. Two ounces were in the top of the fifth. Much of a lead over there at first by Caden Ross. He knows he can't afford to get himself picked off with a runner standing at third. It was a fastball that was able to catch that outside corner to bring the count to one and one. Spot for Harbor, runner in scoring position. 1-1 one, one is a curve ball that hits the dirt. 2-1's a count. Nice job by Marcotte to keep that one in front. Knocks down the ball in the dirt. Prevents those runners from advancing. Ethan Fender is at the plate of the Arkansas State commitment. Struck out back in the first and flew to center in the third inning. Here's the pitch that's swung on and fouled back to even the count at two and two. Well, it's just two and two. We'll see if I'm going to put Ross in motion there at first here with two outs. Try to give him a chance to score on something in the gap. Jackson Wells. Deals. It's low. Brings the count to three and two. Crowd is not happy about that one. Yeah, Wells was walking towards his dugout. He wanted that call on pitch number 80. 
And now the full count. Ross is going to be on the move from first. Three twos on the way. It's up high. And he's going to walk. Now they've got bases loaded. Still get a good grip on that potential breaking ball. Easy take. Walk number six. Drawn by this Rogers offense. And now the bases, or excuse me, for Harbor. Now the bases are loaded for their cleanup hitter. Pitt State commit Brock Kimball. And so far today, Brock Kimball is 0 for 2. He flied to left field back in the second, and he struck out in the third. Kimball on the year is a 337 hitter with 18 RBI. Big, big spot for Harbor. One swing of the bat can not only give them the lead, but all the momentum in this contest. Well, they're trying to go with a little trickeration right there where they thought that they, they went with a pick move that fake like they were throwing to the outfield like it was an overthrow and pitcher held on to it good heads up play by Caden Ross at second base I'm trying a little shenanigans you know, hitting ball tricks it works sometimes sometimes yeah. it doesn't here's a fastball inside corner call the strike or you could just do that yeah you know well it worked for it when you can get a cheap one my philosophy in life. Yeah. Except for when it actually comes to working. <laughs> I like to do that. Oh, one's the count. Here's the pitch. Fastball outside corner call strike. Going two. Two outs here on the top of the fifth. Pitch is on the way, curveball up high. No good, it's one and two. Yeah, a little too much late movement on that one. Started north of the zone. Really no chance of dipping down into the strike zone over the plate. Base is juiced here in the top of the fifth with two outs. One two's on the way. Yeah. And it's right down Broadway for strike three. And just like that, Jackson Wells, look at him. He's excited, got out of a jam. He needed a big pitch, and he paints one right on the outside corner. Strikes out the side, had to work for it, though, but avoids the damage. We're headed to the bottom of the fifth inning. Rogers, two, Harbor, nothing. You're watching the Centennial Bank State Baseball Championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. I think it's important for Arkansas PBS to have sports because it provides sports on a greater platform to the entire community. And it also gives people in various other communities an opportunity to see other schools and other athletes and to have a greater appreciation for not just their own community, but the sports that are available across the state of Arkansas. There are so many lessons that sports provides and it's one of the reasons why it's so important to the next generation of athletes coming up. And Merchants Bank and the Bank of Fayetteville share the mission of Arkansas PBS to enrich and empower all Arkansans. Community, dignity, respect. That's what me banking is all about. More at mebanking.com. The Cherokee Nation, our people, our culture, our history, our future. To learn more, go to visitcherokeenation.com and say hello to the Cherokee Nation. For a DVD copy of any of the state championship games, it's simple and easy. Go to M&M Productions to place your order. That address, mmproductions.net. See that light right there? That's called humidity around that light right there that, with all the bugs flying. Yeah, it's the, thick. The, the rain came earlier today, and it's a little hot right now. Yep. Seven runners left on base by the Wildcats, not taking advantage of the opportunities they are given. And that's why Rodgers has got a 2-0 lead as we are now in officially the late innings. So Rodgers is at the plate, and they will bring up Jackson Wells, Cade Seldomridge, and Ty Frakes. 
as the first pitch is called a strike to Jackson Wells. You got to remember, if you're new to high school baseball, don't watch a lot of it, the seven innings. So technically, the fifth inning would be the start of the late innings. So when we do the stretch, as the curveball hits the inside corner, well, he's the count to 0 2. You're a little older like me. You do the stretch every couple of innings. <laughs> you start stretching <laughs> in the second, fourth. Get up, you wander around aimlessly, usually. Here's the 0 2 pitch up high. Going back to the last half inning, that was just a great pitch by Wells to get out of that jam. Bases loaded, and he pumps one right across the outside corner. Here's the one two. Swung on, lifted out to right center. Going over is the center fielder McClendon, and he makes the catch for the first time. You know, that oh, really seems like, it seems like the, long, the for the first time we've seen the ball put in play. We haven't seen that a whole lot. Yeah. Been a pretty quiet day, but a great job by McClendon there. Had a long way to run. They will track that one down in pretty easily. But you're exactly right. There has been a lot of balls put in play. So Cade Seldomridge comes up 0 for 2, fly to right in the first, and struck out in the third. And the first pitch to him is outside. Thirteen combined strikeouts. There's a curveball outside, goes two and a eleven combined walks. Two two balls, no strikes. There's a change up on the outside corner. Call to strike brings the count two and one. Here's the 2-1 pitch, swung oh. on, lifted high to right field. You can kiss it goodbye. Hits well over that 320 marker. If you're parked out in the parking lot behind right field, you might need a new windshield. That was a no-downer by Cade Seldom Ridge. I, I think that's what they refer to as a moonshot. That, that, there's your UFO right there. That thing was put into orbit. And one swing of the bat, and Rodgers takes advantage and adds to their lead. That's the third base hit of the game for Rodgers, and it comes with a big momentum swing and to right field. A little question that one was going to clear. The only question was by how much. So now Ty Franks comes to the plate. He's been hit by the pitch and walked so far. That one swung on and lifted out the left. Going to the power alley in left center and making the catch. Oh, no, he was McClendon. He fell down and lost it. And so Frakes is going to go in to second base. McClendon had to run a long way for that. We'll have to see what the official score is. They do call it a hit. Couldn't make the play, secure the catch. Back to back extra base hits for the Mounties. Watch the replay here because that was another long run. Almost say that's an error. Yeah, they initially gave it a hit. It's definitely a play that should be made, though. An official score, it is a hit. That's why they're the official scores, and we're not. Here's the first pitch. It's the ball. Fourth hit of the ball game for the Mounties. Now they're going to have a meeting at the mound. Tyler Ridley will talk this one over. As making his way out to the mound for Harbors, Dustin Hellcamp, the head coach for the Wildcats. Okay, back to back hits. You've got the home run to right field, and then you go 320 down the right field line, which went way farther than that. But then you go 355 left center. Yeah. 
two by far the two hardest hit baseballs for either squad. Yeah, for sure. Up to this point, Rogers starting to to tee off on Ridley a little bit. That's probably what this conversation's about. Settle your pitcher down. Nobody up in the bullpen for Harbor, so it's going to be all Ridley. If they do make a change, it would be someone that's on the field already. It's still just three nothing. You know, it, it feels like it's really spiraled out of control for Harbor, but this game is well within yeah. reach. So that brings up the plate Carson Euchre, who struck out back in the second and walked in the third. Here's the 1-0. Change up. This is high. Two rows at the count to Euchre. Fastball swung oh. on. He lost the handle of the bat. It went all the way into the Rogers dugout. This one right down the middle. A lot of times you'll say someone swung out of their shoes, but that time Euchre swung out of his bat. That one just came flying out. Lost control of his bottom hand, and you see the poor kid back in the replay. <laughs> <laughs> he saw the he saw the bat fly out of his face. Oh wow! <laughs> That's when you're thankful for the protective netting. Yes. Watch here's look, here's look another look at it. Whoa! <laughs> 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 poor kid didn't know what was going on. Here's the two one. Fastball hit at the knees. It's 2 2. Good pitch there. Play on the outer third. Can get back to an even count. Two balls, two strikes. Here's the pitch. Fastball misses outside to go 3 and 2. Three, two, inside corner, oh. calling strike three. That one backed up a little bit. Euchre thought he had a free pass, but instead the umpire starts the old chainsaw and rings him up. Rogers faithful, not a huge fan of that call, but it was a good call. That was clearly a strike. So now Noah Good Shield comes to the plate. He walked back in the second inning, then struck out looking back in the third. First pitch is swung on and missed. Boy, that was a big uppercut swing right there. And chased one around the, the shoulder blades. Well, you know, once somebody hits a home run, that's contagious. Absolutely. At least swinging hard is. Here's the 0 1. Fastball misses outside. They're just being patient. I think that's the biggest thing I've taken away from Rodgers. In this contest, they are patient at the play. They are going to make Harbor consistently throw strikes. Put a lot of pressure on the pitch count. Put a lot of pressure on the man on the mound. 1-1 one, one is going to oh. catch the outside corner that time to bring count 1-2. Yeah. Ridley's done a nice job. He's living on that outside edge, that outer third. And more times than not, he's been able to hit it. One ball, two strikes. That's fouled off. Good shield had to protect there, but chased one well out of the zone. Lucky to get a tip, uh, get a piece. Two outs, and we're in the bottom of the fifth inning. Rogers chasing that first ever state championship. Hard to believe the school that's been around as long as they have and as many good players as they've had. One two is going to miss outside. Came with a 75 mile, mile an hour off speed pitch. I 
Rogers Heritage had a chance to win one maybe a decade or so ago. Keith Kilgore led a squad that had Hunter Wood. One of the Blankenships were on that squad. Hunter Wood in the big leagues these days. Here's the 2-2. Two -two. It's popped up to center field. McClendon's on his way over to make the catch, and they get out of the inning. So for the Mounties, they get the big home run to score one run off of two base hits. And as we head to the top of the sixth inning, it's Rogers three, Harbor nothing, and you're watching the Centennial Bank State Baseball Championships in Arkansas PBS Sports. Top of the sixth inning we go as Rogers leads it three to nothing over Harbor. Wildcats have had plenty of base runners, just have not been able to push one across against Jackson Wells. Seven left on base for Harbor. Wells has seven strikeouts. That pitch count though at 85. We'll see how deep they want to go. Well, I tell you what, you, you wonder if Jackson Wells is is done and they just keep coming back and, and he's he's getting out of innings. He is getting out of innings. That is that is a one, one good way to describe it. He is causing a jam and getting out of said jam. I mentioned the seven strikeouts with six walks and another hit batter. So he's given seven free passes. But no runs in the Call that matters most. Well, fastball is going to miss outside. So it's 1 0 on Cooper Dawson. As changeup misses outside to go 2 0. Dawson on the day at a single back in the second inning. Grounded up third base over in the fourth. 2-0, swung on and missed. It's a good rip there by Dawson. A lot of times you'll see batter sitting 2-0 and and take one, but he didn't get cheated on that hack. 2-1's our score, or 2-1's our count, and that one's fouled back. Rogers leads this one 3-0. One clean inning of work for Jackson Wells. As this pitch upcoming is going to be number 90 of his day. Two twos to count. Pitch on the way. Swung on, popped up right side. Back behind first base, and the catch is made. Ty Franks right there to pull it in. It's first out here in the sixth. Calling the Hogs for something. I think it's because the Hogs are, <laughs> last time I checked, they were up 6 1. So that would make sense. As the first pitch to Drew McClendon is fouled back. So start the count 0 1. One out, top of the sixth inning. Rogers leads Harbor 3 0. All correct. Arkansas did just win. Usually, whenever you hear the hog <laughs> call, wherever you are, that, well, that is a good sign that something positive has happened with the university. It varies. They could have been mocking Dossett there. He's committed to play at Arkansas, and he point. popped out. So. Very good point. Here's the 01. Swung on, popped up high on the infield. Coming over is going to be Good Shield. His shortstop position makes the catch for the second out. Quick work here by Jackson Wells. And we've said it a few times. If there's no one on the base pass, he works pretty quick, works pretty efficient. Let's see if he can finish off a second one, two, three inning in the last three frames. Just going to ignore the announcer curse here. We're going to. See if he can get it done, but of course those guys in the powder blues are going to try to prevent that. Ross Felder's at the plate, walked back in the third, struck out in the fourth. 
excuse me, second and four. Fouls that one back. Wells attacking that strike zone. So here's the 01. Swung on, fouled back. There's the count to 02. Velocity still there for Wells. That one touched 85. He's been sitting mid to upper 80s for most of the evening. Here's the 0-2 pitch. Fastball misses low. And that went up at 87, so the velocity is not the issue. As he's thrown 95 pitches tonight. So there's two outs here in the top of the sixth inning. Only six collective hits for both these teams in this one. A lot of strikeouts. Here's the one two. Swung on, fouled back. Just did stay alive. Did Ross Felder. His line scores pretty similar to everybody else tonight. He's been walked once and he struck out once. So one two's the count. Here's Wells with pitch, curveball inside, misses, and it's two and two. Two balls, two strikes as Jackson Wells eyes in to get his side. Here's the 2-2, swung on, out to second. And it's gonna go off his glove in the right field. I would, you know, it's, it's been a conversation we've had. I, I would say that would be an error, but, because it was glove side, and they're gonna score it an error. A little bit of a tough play, but probably a play that needs to be made by Finley Bunch. Going to his left, glove side, and you know, just kicks off the heel of his glove. And prevents that one, two, three. Inning. So now Cade Ratcliffe comes to the plate. He grounded out back in the second inning to the shortstop, and then he was hit by a pitch in the fifth. First pitch to him is a fastball outside. As throw over, safe. We're at, this will be pitch number 100 for Jackson Wells. Here's the 1-0. Fastball in there for a strike. on the way. Fastball in there for strike two. We're at first base for Springdale Harbor. Here's the one, two, swing on and miss. Strikes him out. And once again, Jackson Wells gets out of the inning. We head to the bottom of the sixth inning where the Mounties of Rogers, they lead it three to nothing. You're watching the Centennial Bank State Baseball Championships in Arkansas PBS Sports. For information regarding COVID-19 vaccine clinic locations, call the Arkansas Department of Health Vaccine Clinic Call Center at 1-800-985-6030.
Now, more than ever, community is important. Local schools, businesses, and charities are in need of support. Each one of us can make a difference. When you volunteer, give, shop locally, or simply participate, you help support and grow your community. It makes us all stronger when we all are involved. I'm Susie Everett, Everett Buick GMC. We're proud to be a part of this wonderful community and want to encourage each of you to be involved in yours. We never gonna stop. Back here in Benton, as we are winding this thing down, we're in the bottom of the sixth inning where the goose egg is still up for Harbor. You can support your team and join the conversation on social media. Just use the hashtag ARPBS Sports. So Josh Loing is going to be first up for the Rogers Mounties. It'll go 7-8-9. First pitch is in there for a called strike. Just underway here in the bottom of the sixth inning. Tyler Ridley came back out to start the sixth. As the curveball was fouled off the leg of Josh Lawing. Cramped up on that one. No, it went right off his ankle. Back press got cramped. <laughs> when, when he fouled it off, it yeah, you could see it come off that ankle, and he immediately was like, oh, boy. It's okay. Rub some dirt on. Oh, wait, we're on turf. O2 is the count. Here's the pitch by Ridley. Swung on and missed. And so that's going to do it for Loing here in the sixth inning. Now Finley Bunch comes to the plate. He struck out both times. He's, he's been at the plate today. Four strikeouts for Tyler Ridley in relief. Was touched up for the homer. In the fifth. How about showing Bunt? They're going to say he went around. I thought he pulled it back. He was, he was working it down the line. And either way, they appealed it down to the third base ump. He said he did go around. So it's 0 1. Here's 0 2. And it's a strike if he swung at it. And now it's 0 2. Ridley definitely picking up the pace as far as his delivery to the dish. Trying to get his offense to the plate one more time and see if they can scrap something together in the top of the seventh to try to extend this. Here's the 0-2 as it's change up, missed outside. Rogers so far, three runs, four hits, and an error. For Harbor, no runs, two hits, no errors. That one swung on. Loop right to the shortstop, and there's two outs. Right to him. They're short. Ross Felder, a little scouting report there, lined up perfectly. Did not even have to move. So a little pop up. So now JT Melson is going to come to the plate. He singled back in the third inning, walked in the fourth. He's thrown out trying to score back in the fourth on a single to center. Perfect throw from Drew McClendon, gunned him down. Those pitches in the dirt, and it's 1 0. Seems like a long, long time ago, but Melson made a nice diving catch near the foul line. 1 0 is up high. Goes to 2 0. That was back in the early innings, but that was two hours ago. Two 0 pitches on the way. 
Fastball cut the outside corners two and one. Here's a two one swung on popped up on the infield. Over to short and right there to haul it in was Felder and that's going to do it for the sixth inning. So we head to the seventh inning where Rogers leads it three to nothing. You're watching the Centennial Bank State Baseball Championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. The Arkansas Citizens Access Network gives you a front row seat to your state government. Live stream board and commission meetings, press conferences, legislative proceedings, and more. Events are also archived for 30 days. Receive updates right on your phone by texting ARCAN to 313131. Be informed and get involved at myarkansaspbs.org slash ARCAN. Blimey. Quite something, isn't it? Watch entire seasons of your favorite shows from Masterpiece. Well, one thing is clear. Time is not on our side. With Passport on the PBS video app. Binge your favorite and the latest shows from our huge collection of dramas. I'm looking forward to all sorts of things. Oh, how exciting. Or catch up on episodes you've Come missed. Go on, then. What are you waiting for? Downton is catching up with the times we live in. These and other Masterpiece shows are available with Passport on the PBS video app. Download it today. You can experience the action over and over again next week and watch all of the championship games. Just go to YouTube.com slash Arkansas PBS. Baseball, softball, football, basketball, all at your disposable. You can get out of working for a few hours, just watch some championship games. That's what I do at work. Hopefully my boss is not listening or watching. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jackson Wells is going to try to make this a complete game. He needs three outs. And the Rogers Mounties will take home their very first state championship. They've been in this game five times and never won. And Jackson Wells is trying to put the hammer to the nail in this one. So up first for Springdale Harbor is going to be Caden Ross. As first pitch is going to be called a ball. There's some discussion of a pitch limit at 110. So unless it's a real quick outing here, Wells may not be able to finish this one. Once he does hit that 110 mark, if that's the number, he will be able to finish the batter, but not be able to face another one. 2-0 so is the count. Here's the pitch. That's going to be outside. 3-0. That's what's the exact thing you don't want to do is walk a leadoff hitter in the top of the seventh. Again, just a seven inning game at the high school level. And the 3 0 pitch misses outside, and so that's going to send Caden Ross to first base on walks. The third time he's walked today. It's called patience. Really? I mean, though, he's gotten ahead of. Jackson Wells every time he's been at the plate. Yep. So now Walker Emmel's at the plate. As the fastball comes in there, call the strike. Top of the order up for Harbor. Wildcats have just two hits though. Walker Emmel had one the very first plate appearance of this game. 0-1's the count. Swung on, found out of play. You gotta remember that was an infield single. He beat, it, beat out to shortstop. So only one time has Harbor had a base hit to the outfield. That's, again, effective wildness on the mound from Jackson Wells. O2 is the count with a runner at first. We're in the top of the seventh. Here's the pitch, swung on. It's over to short. They're going to make the long throw. He's safe. Another infield single for Emil. He's got two of those, but now all of a sudden, Harbor has something cooking in the top of the seven. Two on, nobody out. And that's going to bring up Clark Jenkins. 
who today got on because of a fielder's choice in the first. He walked in the third and struck out in the fifth. Runners at first and second, no outs top of the seventh. Big move to second, and there's no throw. So the next pitch that Wells throws will be number 110. Pitch is inside, call the ball. Clark Jenkins at the plate, followed by Ethan Fender. Both players committed to going to Arkansas State. Here's the 1-0, up high, 2-0. Boy, that would not be good of Jackson Wells to have to exit this ball game after leaving the bases juice. Two O's on the way. Up high, three and oh. And it's gonna be take all the way, you gotta believe, for Clark Jenkins here. As his catcher, Mark Hott's gonna go out and talk with him. He's gotta deliver something over the plate. You know, we've said it time and time again, it's easy from our vantage point, but he's gotta throw strikes. Make Harbor show that they can beat you with the bat. His stuff has been good today when it's been in the strike zone. Yeah. That's what the only problem is, it hasn't been there as consistently as you would like. And here we are, it's the top of the seventh, and he hasn't given up a run. So it's not like he's just completely taking it out there. And he's dominated with his fastball. Yes. Here's the 3 0 fastball. Up high and in tight. We've got bases loaded. So now you've got Ross going to third, Emil going to second, Jenkins at first. And now nobody out. But the base is loaded. And now Rogers has got some decision making to do. Jack Jackson Wells is going to head to the dugout and we'll get your next picture for you for the Rogers Mounties as you're watching the Centennial Bank State Baseball Championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. This month in Passport on the PBS Video app, your on-demand library for the best of PBS. Born a slave in Jamaica, taken from a mama. This be my story. I hate the myth of Hemingway. The man is much more interesting than the myth. There is no alternative to soul. That on national TV was revolutionary. These and other shows are available with Passport on the PBS Video app. Download it today. You know, I think sports are really big to a lot of people. And because it's an important part of our fabric in our community, and the one good thing about what I've seen is it's high quality production. You know, you think of the small communities all over Arkansas, it's a big deal that they can turn on the TV or DVR or whatever, and know they're gonna get a quality product. And so I think it just expands the, uh, the focus of what PBS is doing. You know, Arkansas PBS is doing a great job, and, and I think it's part of education. Well, Madden Dillard is the new pitcher for the Rogers Mounties, and he has developed a situation that can be tough to get out of as he's got bases loaded, no outs in the top of the seventh inning, and his team leading by a score of three to nothing. And Dillard pitched in the semifinals for Rogers and their win over North Little Rock. Five innings, three hits, no runs, three strikeouts, did walk a couple on 88 pitches. That was a game that Rodgers had to hold on, win 11 to seven, but he was lights out to start things off. And he's got to try to clean this one up and possibly get the save and give Rodgers a championship as Jackson Wells day is done. This line, RJ, six innings pitched, three hits, eight strikeouts, eight walks, no runs. As of yet. But is responsible for all three on base. Yeah. I mean, it's a good line it is. Uh, outside the eight walks. I mean, that's, that's a lot of walks, but I mean, it's a good line. But look, he gutted that one out. You don't see a lot of people throwing 110 pitches or yep. 111 pitches anymore these days. Yeah, Wells stays in the game. He goes over to play third base. He faces Lawing.
In comes the three-hole hitter, Ethan Fender. 31 RBIs committed to play at A-State. So bases are juiced, no outs, top the seventh. Here's Fender. Swung on and missed. Pulled the string on him first pitch. Really nice movement on that. Down and away. 77 on the radar. And a great pitch coming out of the bullpen. On the season, Fender has had 31 RBI. Here's the 1 Swung on, popped up, foul. He's got room in foul territory, and he drops right through the glove of Jake McClain. You know, you look at that, and you sure you'd love to get the out, but not the end of the world that he dropped that foul ball. No, you're going to score a run. You're going to give up a run. More than likely, the runner from second is going to advance to third. Again, though, with a three-run lead, you'd probably like to go ahead and take the out. Yeah. But, again, not the end of the world that that, that play was not made. So it's only two now. Ethan Fender. Righty versus lefty matchup. Here's the pitch. Up high and outside. One and two. And tried to sneak a, a breaking ball in there. It's never, never broke. Kind of fluttered outside and easy take. Two strikes. Here's the pitch. Swung on out to left field. That'll score one run. Hold the runner at third. Just go station to station. But a big base hit by Fender puts Harbor on the board. And all of a sudden, RJ, things are a whole lot more interesting than they were just a few minutes ago. That is Fender's 32nd RBI this season. And it came at a great time as now the cleanup hitter, Brock Kimball, comes to the plate. Kimball on the day flew out the left field in the second, struck out in the third, and struck out again in the fifth, both times looking. Down by two with no outs, top of the seventh. Swung on, foul back. Just did get a piece of that one. Nice pitch over the outer third, but. Kimball right on it as far as timing the velocity of it. No one pitch is on the way. Swung on, popped up, foul territory. First baseman Frakes is going over there and collects the out. It's a big first out there. Retire the cleanup hitter. Kimball at the first out of the frame. And now double play could win Rogers a state championship. Well, here's the deal. Brock Kimball was a 337 hitter, 18 RBI, but your five hole hitter, Cooper Dawson's up, and he's had four home runs this year with 24 RBI. Teeth of the lineup for the Wildcats certainly up at the opportune time. We'll see if Madden Dillard, the Rogers lefty, Get out of this jam. Here's Dillard's pitch. Swung on, chopped to third. It's taken by the third baseman. He's safe at third. Run scores. Everybody's safe. So I think it, it looked like he might have beat the initial play, but the question is, was a tag made after the base runner slid off the base? The run is going to score either way. But it looked like he might have slid off the base. The two players still in contact, but no call is going to be changed. So an RBI fielder's choice. Here's a nice look at the replay. I mean, it's. No, he's safe. He's safe, but see, he comes off the bag, but the tag was not made. So a good, good call there by the field umpire. And all of a sudden, it is a one-run game still with the bases loaded. Now Drew McClendon is at the plate. Base is still loaded. There's a curveball and misses outside. Oh, the drama. 
We got drama <laughs> here at the top of the seven. That's why we're here. One of the count. Pitch on the way. Swung on a miss. A good spot there for Dillard. You can tell he's trying to stay away from the bats of this harbor lineup. Trying to live on the black. One one's account. Here's the pitch missed inside. Two and one. Clinton's had a really nice day in the field. Threw a runner out at home. A couple nice running catches made them look easy in center field. Two ones account. Here's the pitch. Swung on, fouled back. Two two. Up next is Ross Felder. So far, Springdale Harbor has sent six guys to the plate here in the top of the seventh. Two balls, two strikes. Rogers leads Harbor three to two. Pitch on the way, swung on, looking out the left field. And the catch is made. Now here comes the throw up the line. And they throw him out the plate. That's going to do it. And the Rogers Mounties have won their first ever state title. What a throw from JT Melson, but more importantly, look at the play from catcher Eli Marcotte. The throw was well off the mark. Beats the runner, but Mark got able to make the catch and then get back into the baseline and tag out the runner right there and gets a state championship for the Mounties. What a bang bang play. Well, I will say this Jenkins, Coach Hellcamp, was telling Jenkins to get back and keep his foot on the bag to tag. He was about five feet down the line and then had to retreat and then come yep. back. And so either way, it was a great throw from Melson in the outfield and Rogers claims her first ever state championship. Let's go ahead and take a break when we come back after watching this replay real fast. Look at this. I, I mean, you see the catch, tough yep. catch. So the jump from third, like you're talking about RJ, not as great as you would have liked. And it slowed him down just enough. But he's able to run right into the tag from Marcotte. Yeah. And the Mounties, as you mentioned, get their first championship. 3 2 is your final score. Rogers wins it. You think of state championships, you think of drama, you think of, you know, heart racing action. You got that one, this one. It, it wasn't like that throughout the entire game. It all happened in the seventh inning. And the Rogers Mounties are your 2020. High school baseball state championship. What well, champions? It's 2021. It is. Yeah, because it's the 2021 season. We're forgetting so. that. We, we forgot there wasn't one last 2020 year. 2020 so. did not happen. Yeah. So 21 baseball state champions, and look at them, boy. Uh, they earned this one. They did. You know, and Harper had chances in this game. The first six innings, they left eight on base. Yeah. They leave 10 on base for the entire contest. And, Harbor continued to have runners on base, but Jackson Wells continued to pitch around it, pitch around it, eventually hit his pitch maximum, left the bases loaded, had to rely on his bullpen, and Harbor able to scratch across a couple runs. But that final play, just first the catch and the throw by JT Melson, but I don't think enough credit can, can be given to their catcher, Eli Marcotte, able to, to track down the throw from left field, get back into the baseline, tag out the runner and get the victory. So who so who are you giving it to? I, I mean, I, I know that they're they're giving the tournament MVP right now on the field and for Rogers came uh, Ross yeah. through three walks, scored a run. 
They're, they're saying JT Melson is the tournament MVP, but who are you giving your MVP to, Bobby? That's a good question. I mean, Jackson Wells was, was really good when he was on. Mm -hmm. so, but I don't know if he was consistent enough to be my MVP for the game. So let's give it to the to that duo, the JT Melson and Eli Marcotte to close the game. Yeah. You don't see 7-2 putouts very often. It's even more rare to see a 7-2 putout win a state championship, and it's exactly what happened for the Mounties. Yeah. And you're exactly right. The Mounties of Rogers are your 2021 state champions. When we come back, we'll wrap up today's entire day of events as you're watching the Centennial Bank State Baseball Championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. to your public media network. Text ARPBS to 313131 to receive the latest updates. Message and data rates may apply. There are your 2021 high school baseball state champions in class 6A, the Rogers Mounties. Is they did it in an impressive fashion. It, it was drama all the way to the end, Bobby Swafford. And we expected it. The, the two schools that, that were really there all season long in the 6A West, yeah. they split their regular season series, and it came down to the final out. It came down to the final batter, what you expected. Probably not as clean of a game as we probably would have liked to seen or expected from these two squads. A lot of walks, a lot of guys left on base, especially on the harbor side. But at the end, the end of the day, I think the better team who played today, won today, because Rodgers took advantage of a few opportunities they had early in the game, and Harbor was un unsuccessful in their opportunities. Rodgers, they moved to 23 and 7. Springdale Harbor falls to 25 and 9 on the season. But nothing, I mean, both these teams had outstanding seasons. And just the fact that you think about the roads to get here, you know, had to go through Bryant, that being Harbor, and and just just the everything to get to this point. Uh, both these two teams it was a fun game to watch it really was i mean these these two teams just really impressed i mean the patience at the plate for rogers is really what jumped out to me the most the the, the ability to draw eight walks in a, in a game is is impressive because you get you want you get to the stage of state of a state championship and you want to get up there and swing the bat and and try to put your team in a position to win the fact that they were able to stay patient at the plate and find a way to to get guys on base put a little extra pressure on the pitching staff from harbor that was key and they were able to scratch across a couple runs of course the solo home run which ends up being the difference well, tomorrow, a big day of baseball, softball, soccer. It all gets started right here on Arkansas PBS Sports at 10 a.m. You and I get to have breakfast and baseball That's in the right. morning. That's not too bad. Two-way baseball game coming up tomorrow morning. Today, we crowned four champions. The rest of the weekend, we got to crown, count them, four, eight, 12, 16 more. There's a lot more a lot more hardware to hand out over the next 48 hours or so. going to be a lot of fun. Of, of course, we always want to say thank you to all the folks back in the truck. On the camera decks, those folks on the camera decks today got a little wet. Out, they did, and they did an outstanding job. That shot from center field is as good as you're going to see. Yeah, for sure. And, uh, hey, good news is we don't have weather the rest of the weekend. It's going to be beautiful skies here in Saline County. Knock on wood. Yep. And uh, we are going to have some fun here in Benton, Arkansas. As it's championship weekend, soccer, softball, baseball. is all happening here on Arkansas PBS Sports. Your final in this one. It, it was the Rogers Mounties 3 the Harbor Wildcats, too, as Rogers wins the 6A title. And you're watching the Centennial Bank State Baseball Championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. <laughs>